Vishal Yadav. Today we have another special guest. Her name is Jaya Sharma. Jaya Sharma ma'am has played one test, one T20 and over 77 ODIs for India. She has been a cricket player. She has played for domestic cricket. She also plays for railways. She has been a selector and uh, there's so much to learn from her cricket journey. And today we'll, we'll dive deep into those little aspects that made her the cricketer that she is today and also get to learn a lot from her journey. Welcome Jaya ma'am. Thank you so much Vishal. Uh, thank you for uh, introducing me in such a manner that uh, today I'm feeling uh, proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, thank you for introducing and um, yeah, I mean, uh, the journey is uh, long enough, uh, more than two de- decades, you can say. And uh, uh, roller coaster, right? But exciting. I think at 10 or 12, you you were the uh, was first when you were introduced to cricket. So take right. take us back through those days, how it all happened for you. So uh, it, it uh, actually uh, it will surprise you that it uh, did not start uh, for me with cricket. My sporting journey started with football. Okay. Uh, and, and at the age of 11, uh, 12. Um, I played the Federation Cup football uh, in the senior, uh, you know, age group. Uh, wow. I was only in 600, <laughs> so that was my first love. I started with football. I hmm. played hockey even hmm. for Delhi, hmm. and uh, simultaneously when I when I got into football, hmm. so you know the seniors of uh, the college, uh, they they said there is uh, also cricket for women's. Mm-hmm. So then I got to know that you know women's cricket is uh, all, also there. So there was a centre basically in Delhi where all the you know senior players used to practice. Uh, so I joined them. I joined them and uh, it was a centre for uh, current uh, Northern Railway uh, uh, you know team. It mm-hmm. was the centre and and the supervisor. Basically, uh, the person who was in, involved with the Northern Railways cricket team, mm-hmm. uh, Mrs. Rajesh Nair, she mm-hmm. she is right now the uh, with ICA uh, as a women head. Mm-hmm. So she was there. So she she I, she spotted me, and uh, I started playing uh, right away for the senior team mm-hmm. when I was you know 12, 12 years or thirteen years old. Okay. But, and. Uh, Interesting part was uh, I played my first tournament under uh, Anjum Chopra. Okay. We played uh, under 16 together, basically. Oh, amazing. So that was the that was the start uh, of cricketing journey. But uh, it was uh, basically it was a very hard decision for me because I, I used to love football a lot okay. and hockey a lot. Uh, so it was basically hard. To, hard to decide which game to choose because ultimately you have to choose. Okay. So uh, the turning the turning point for me was uh, one tournament in which uh, all the senior players like Diana Adelji and uh, many more stalwarts of the game, Sudasha, Shubhangi Kulkarni, they were all playing in a uh, there was a hot weather tournament that used to happen. Hmm. Uh, with the likes of you know Anju Om Chopra, Anju Jain, oh. all all Hemlata Kala, Nitu David. So I was part of that tournament, and oh. uh, I got uh, the best upcoming youngster award, and oh. uh, the award was given by uh, Mr. Kapil Dev. Oh, so how how it uh, happened for me is very interesting because um, uh, when I walked up to him uh, to collect my uh, Price. Hmm. He asked me, "How old are you?" So I said, "Sir, 12." Mm-hmm. So he told me that, uh, "Do you know that Sachin Tendulkar has played for India at the age of 14?" Mm-hmm. So I, I think you should also do something like that. Okay. So you know, that was uh, uh, the words uh-huh. uh, like uh, it was a holy grail. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it really changed uh, the fate, basically, and. Uh, Ultimately, I led it up playing cricket. Amazing. The start cannot get any better than this. I know. I know. <laughs> okay. But I still, I still, I still miss football. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, you can still go back to football. Uh, but good that you know you chose cricket. 
because you went on to play for your state and then you went on to play for uh, india in 2002 you made your debut against england uh, tell me about this match tell me about your, your debut match how special was it how how nervous were you i i used to visualize uh, wearing the india blazer okay you know always logo uh, the blazer and the uh, the cap with indian logo i always used to visualize that so for first and foremost that was the memory that is very close to my heart when i wore that cap and blazer for the first time hmm. so uh, that was the uh, very important uh, thing for me and uh, yes uh, i mean starting with your starting the career uh, on international level is not a uh, easy task right it puts you a lot of uh, pressure it it throws lot of challenges that you so uh, uh, i mean it was not a very smooth ride mm-hmm. because uh, when i got, got to play i uh, i couldn't do much okay but i think uh, i think that is something uh, i will relate to uh, you know later mm-hmm. with what currently i am doing okay. so uh, it makes sense that why why it happened that you know uh, when i got the chance mm-hmm. why didn't i go and explore uh, like a pro okay so there, there is a reason behind it so right. i will i will uh, you know talk about that later in our chat 2002 you made your debut uh, against england 2003 and 4 i think were those you know your your peak years uh, can we call it because you scored heavily in the uh, in the international circuit right. uh, i think there was west right. indies and there was sri lanka touring home i started with england uh, new zealand uh, okay. new zealand yeah okay. back in 2003 they okay. were the defending champion uh, yeah. of the world cup and they toured india okay you know mm-hmm. so uh, Uh, we had a camp uh, so our uh, captain at that time uh, ms mamta mebin mm-hmm. uh, he had a meeting so mm-hmm. she asked all of us you know mm-hmm. what do you think uh, could be the result of this uh, five uh, one day series okay five matches so everybody is was you know like come on man i mean uh, it was the thought was going inside the head come on man i mean you were talking about the world champions uh, defending world champions and uh, yeah. yeah it's the first time mm. that we were pushed to think mm. that something else can be done you know okay. if okay. they what if they are defending world champions what if they are you know probably at the top uh, at this point of time mm. we can we also can do something yeah so uh, someone said uh, you know the result would go in the, in the favor of uh, new zealand of course hmm. uh, 3 2 or something like that to uh, you know just uh, wrap up the talk but that was the series that uh, proved to be uh, uh, you know uh, a milestone for okay. indian cricket uh, a game changing moment Yes, we beat New Zealand by four one. Okay. And the, the last game also, we could have won five nil. We could uh-huh. have won very easily. We were on the verge of it. Okay. But somehow, uh, you know, in the last, uh, some player got panicked and okay. it uh, went their way. I mean, New Zealand's way. But yes, and that was the uh, series. in which i scored uh, heavily and got uh, the women uh, player of the series Amazing. and then the west indies tour happened yes as you men- rightly mentioned uh, the west indies tour happened in that also i uh, you know scored a lot uh, so that was something uh, uh, game changing uh, environment for us we, we build uh, the we we had this uh, you know the notion that we we are lacking somewhere then yep. this notion was not any more the part of the, the thinking mind right and and you know a lot of credit to shubhangi kulkarni ma'am uh, who was actually looking after the you know the international and, and the domestic fixtures for india team in the run up to the 2005 world cup uh, i can't i can't i mean i can't thank her enough because uh, i'll i'll be i'll be short of words because she has done tremendous you know uh, work behind the scene hmm. 
behind the scene of the campaign of 2005 world cup leading to it so she she was she she has uh, given us all a uh, lot of exposure a mm-hmm. uh, lot of opportunities to come okay. out on the ground and you know uh, tell people here yeah, that mm. india is good enough okay so that that opportunity we got and uh, we mm. stick together as a team mm. and um, we had a you know bunch of cricketers i mean the likes of Mithali Raj and uh, Anjum Chopra, Anju Jain, Hemla Takala, Neetu Deepit. Yeah. So uh, me, Julian, we were the junior ones, you know, at that point of time. So, but yes, I mean, she, Shubhangi Kulkarni, she is the person behind the scene who put every piece together, and right. uh, we can't uh, thank enough to her. for right. her dedication and her work towards the wcl amazing amazing also uh, i was talking about the 2003 and 2004 uh, which was again very special for you because in yeah. in around no 10 odi matches you got six half centuries uh, there was west indies there was sri lanka touring at home and that was the time you know you were sort of regaining your form because when you started you start wasn't that good but uh, something yeah. changed in a year what exactly yes. was that uh, now when you retrospect and now when you look back what exactly did you do ma'am or what exactly did you change in those uh, initial years i think uh, as i mentioned uh, uh, chal that uh, you know that question which uh, mamta mai been asked us hmm. i think that you know somehow was a thinking point that why is she asking this that means there is nothing to be taken as a granted so there's something we could do and that is i think uh, you know uh, not consciously but subconsciously gave the confidence that yes we we are uh, someone and we are able to put up a good show okay and uh, i wasn't aware of uh, if you uh, ask me frankly I'm, i didn't do anything extra Okay. I mean, I was I was definitely working on my skill set, acquiring skills. Yeah. That is one uh, factor. But uh, but yes, subconsciously something happened, yeah. which I uh, did not uh, have idea about then. Yeah. But yes, today I can say uh, I can say what happened was the faith, the belief, which uh, got into us, especially me, if I have to talk about. so that is something which uh, happened subconsciously for me okay interesting interesting and then this yeah. uh, you know series happened uh, we'll we'll quickly dive deep into this 2005 world cup in south africa yeah. it was your maiden yeah. world cup it was your first world cup and you know 2002 you made your debut and within 3 years you were now opening the indian side at the world cup well uh, f- uh, my memory goes back to Two years uh, before, you know, the 2005 World Cup, okay. because we started preparing uh, two years prior to that event, mm-hmm. and we were a bunch of 30 uh, players mm-hmm. who have worked very hard okay. in terms of in in terms of of our fitness, basically. So, if I have to put one uh, factor. Mm-hmm. that changed uh, the scenario for the indian team was the fitness okay you know, we used to have fitness yes i mean uh, before before this we were not uh, treated as you know uh, uh, some team with good fielding side yeah. but for that two years we put in a lot ha- lot of hard work towards our fitness and that okay. actually did wonders for us Okay. And it it the the compliment came from the selector of uh, England team, you know. Okay. The compliment came after the after the series. Uh, I mean, it came from uh, one of the selectors of England team that in that in the World Cup your okay. team was, you know, okay. at the at the best uh, okay. when it, when uh, when it came to fielding side. So that was you know, compliment in itself is a. it's very uh, interesting right. because uh, right. uh, 
uh, Indian men team also earlier was not uh, touted to be uh, the you know the best fielding side. Correct. They also gradually uh, came Had with uh, you know. Yeah, so that was that was something uh, the highlight for us uh, for the campaign. And uh, uh, secondly, uh, that a bunch of thirty people uh, hmm. together for two years it makes you know uh, it makes you share a same goal hmm. and uh, mission uh, you can say. Hmm. So yes, uh, everyone was like that. We have to be in the finals. Everyone was like, we have to be in the finals of the World Cup, and that happened. Yeah. But we didn't. We didn't. Uh, frankly uh, speaking, we didn't uh, think beyond that. What okay. about finals? You know, what about finals? We, we we were like so much excited for the fact that you know we have we have made made it to the finals, and uh, that's it. After after that. Uh, everyone was no. Ab kya karna hai? You know. <laughs> so the, yeah, I mean, because for us it was a great achievement, mm. and uh, we played every team uh, in the league. Mm. We played nine matches in the league. One got washed out for us. Uh, luckily, it was Australia. Yeah. So uh, that that was one thing, and uh, I think the best part of it was. In every match, some or the other player was clicking. Okay. It was not that you know, just Mitali yeah. scoring yeah. or just yeah. Jhoon taking wickets. Right. It was every every occasion somebody used to step up to the occasion and perform and deliver and take the home uh, take the team home. So okay. that was the best part of the 2005 World Cup. Okay, a combined team effort. That's right. There's also one incident that I want you to talk about uh, from the 2005 World Cup, of course, uh, that the teams, you know, the Indian team specifically, were were not given proper accommodation when they landed there. Uh, there was some hustle bustle which happened over there. But later on, you took that as a mission and made sure that you know we want the best accommodation in South Africa. What happened exactly there? Yeah, I mean that is something uh, you know which is coming up after. Decades. <laughs> this story in itself is, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, if if I look back at look uh, uh, back at it, gives us a sense of pride that we uh, managed to do something, and we managed to give, uh, you know, give that back to them with our performance. Okay. So that was the highlight, actually. That yeah. was the highlight, and again, I would say, uh, I would say it was on subconscious level, definitely, because it, when we were playing matches, we were not bothered about you know where we have been put up, what what the uh, facilities we are lacking, okay. what are what do we want, hmm. and we we were never uh, in that kind of a mindset. Hmm. But I think. It uh, hit us hard uh, to everyone, mm. and uh, uh, ultimately uh, that became as a you can you can say a uh, final nail in the coffin, mm-hmm. which turned that Indian team yeah. to go all out and reach to the finals of the 2005 World Cup. Oh. So that was that is something uh, I'm really proud of as a as as a team member. And uh, the players of that era. I mean, uh, it's a salute. It's a salute to uh, the players of that era. And uh, definitely, World Cup became as a mission for us okay. to prove that we we can be on the world map. Uh, lovely. What you did, what you you know, the entire team did, ma'am. Salute to you people. Uh, you did not verbally do anything about that particular situation. But like the women have already done in the past, in the history, they have always proved it with their actions, and that is exactly what you guys did. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 2005 uh, happened. Uh, India reached the finals, although we did not win the finals uh, against Australia. Uh, but then still, it was it was a huge moment in Indian cricket. 
2006 led to the PCCI and the WCI merger. Kudos to your performances and the India team's performances that sort of brought this discussion again. Right. What exactly happened after that? What if you recollect today? Uh, the facilities, of course, increased. The infrastructure were better for you guys. Uh, what key changes did you observe, ma'am, when this merger happened? Uh, when I, uh, with respect to uh, a player, yeah. a lot of thing uh, things happened. Uh, I mean, I will not uh, be talking as in uh, you know in terms of uh, administration. Yeah. But yes. Uh, on the players level lot of things happened uh, first was the improvement in the facilities given to the players you know to play uh, before uh, that we uh, were whatever we could manage uh, you know before the merger the grounds we could manage were not uh, actually um, fit enough grounds some of the grounds were not very fit enough to play on so a okay. uh, lot of uh, players uh, got injured as well mm. i mean uh, if i talk about my experience i got a lot of injury right so uh, the infrastructure improved mm. you know uh, the uh, basic necessity the resources uh, you know at a disposal of a, a player that improved money came into the equation Yeah. Something uh, you know, a domestic player uh, is also able to earn something out now. Yeah. Uh, I'm not talking about the seniors, but even the juniors, the under 19s who are pl- who are playing, they can make something out of it. Yeah. So you know, player uh, players are getting uh, on their feet. They are getting self-sufficient, right. and uh, of course, exposure uh, with the with respect to the. the performances that you know the indian team have been putting uh, forward mm-hmm. the exposure came uh, with bcci so lot of these things as a at, at a player level improved mm-hmm. but unfortunately i would like to uh, uh, you know say here that unfortunately after all these resources mm-hmm. somehow the game got down okay the level of game mm-hmm. that was earlier gone down i don't know what is the reason behind it you know the uh, in one days also now if you see a team scoring the team is scoring uh, somewhere about 130 140 odd runs and that is happening in t20 as well right. so that is something which i am not able to understand that you know with the resources coming up what happened to the game it should it should be we see only railway team putting up you know Higher totals, True. but but what about the other teams? The the format is uh, such that you are getting so much of matches now mm-hmm. in a BCCI calendar, which right. was not earlier uh, uh, you know available for teams like if I talk about uh, the in zones the uh, teams like Assam, Rajasthan, mm-hmm. Tripura. Mm-hmm. They, in the earlier formats, they uh, didn't uh, have that. so many games to play right. but yeah. now they are getting a chance to play uh, those games so what happened to the game i mean uh, in one day as at least we we would like to see teams okay. touching 200 teams going above 200 so that is one thing which is uh, you, you know bothering me that why this thing is happening okay i think it's a very important question and uh, uh which also leads me to another topic uh, you also mentioned about this uneven grounds and you know lack of better facilities uh which sort of led to a lot of injuries in the early days and because of lack of physios uh in the indi side uh, there was no you know immediate treatment for these uh, injuries which or the basic niggles that the players uh got early on in their careers i think 2000 2006 this merger happened 2007 2008 was when you when you had to take this decision of dropping out from cricket and injury was one of the major reasons why you had to sort of take this decision uh it yeah have, it would have been ma'am super difficult I, i'm sure because you were still in your prime days but then injury uh, hit you in your crucial days and you had to take this decision let me tell you uh, vishal after merger as well the the, the indian railway team used to play without a physio the cream of the indian team mm-hmm. uh, 
uh, you know which is with the in, uh, indian railways uh, which was indian railway side yeah we used to play without any physio okay you know so that 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 was something which that's what i'm that's what i'm saying that the best of the uh, players of the country not given adequate facility yes it's i mean it's not that you know something uh, against uh, the administration right but that's how that's how it it, it was mm-hmm. basically now that it it has been improved let but as you said after the merger yeah. we went on to play lot many years without these facilities right. but but again we used to perform to a level mm-hmm. that you know indian railways it was a very uh, i mean the uh, opposition used to fear indian railways passion and uh, the commitment the de- determination was very was at a very different level if i talk about uh, about the players of previous Correct. era for sure ma'am for sure there was no motivation monetary there was nothing right there was no motivation there was no facilities there were no resources yeah. but the performance was there i have read a lot about you know the uh, indian women's cricket when it was under wci umbrella and uh, so, you know the challenges that they had to go through uh, right from not having you know facilities like you rightly said uh, to traveling in hundreds of trains to staying in dormitories uh it always makes me wonder you know what made them still stick to this game and what uh, made them still continue the game and cl- clearly it is the passion clearly it was the love for the game definitely because you know uh, at that point of time there was not a there was not a uh, ray of uh, hope uh, you know as well Correct. i mean we never thought that we will be under bcci one day and you know uh traveling uh, traveling through air mm-hmm. or uh, you know being in uh, uh, three star four star hotel correct and uh, getting to uh, interna- international venue uh, see i am uh, i was with bdca as a selector for last uh, three years mm-hmm. the senior team the junior team they are getting center wicket practice on yeah. ferocia otla <laughs> i mean abhi <laughs> we didn't even get to practice in the side nets of ferocia kotla and the team is playing a practice match on the center wicket of ferocia kotla i mean can you imagine the difference right 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 so, so this is the difference i mean you have been to you now you are playing in the best uh, uh, stadiums international stadiums test venues true so yeah i mean uh, and 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 a lot of credit like you rightly said about this this advancement that happened a lot a lot of credits for that goes to bcci and of course for oh. all the cricketers uh, for all the ex cricketers like you uh, you know who made the most of every opportunity that came their way there are a lot of lot of uh, you know legends stalwarts of the game those right. were the stalwarts of the game diana ma'am and they were uh, they were all you know uh, if i talk about um, in a, you know metaphorically uh, if i talk about so uh, they sowed the seeds yeah. you know that that uh, uh, at that level they sowed the seeds correct i think our generation you know uh, put sweat and uh, water in it and uh, now it's it's the time yeah. to take that to a you know different uh, level yeah and uh, bear bear the fruit uh, it's it's time to bear the fruit and you have to uh, actually use it to your advantage and take your game to you know the heights for sure that is something required in, which is required now every generation has something or the other role to play so 2000 and 2008 uh, was when you when you played your last international match uh, you you stopped playing international game but then you know there were so many things so many other things that you started taking up i want to quickly talk about those other aspects those other assignments that you you know you sort of had in mind uh, after you quit from international cricket uh, we can we will also talk about your sports management which you are currently pursuing from iim rohtak 
and also sculpting mentor which you are currently part of yeah so i was i was out of the uh, world cup journey because of a shoulder injury okay for 2009 2009 uh, we were in yes for 2009 uh, the world cup was scheduled in australia and uh, i was ruled out uh, because of a shoulder injury okay so uh, after that you know uh, it was i was very keen on uh, finding that you know uh, what 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 are the factors that determines the performance of a player you uh-huh. know what happens uh, when, when a player performs and what happens that a player is not able to perform uh, you know given that every advantage or every uh, uh, skill set that they possess correct so it uh, i i this curiosity took me you know to uh, dig deep in into the aspect of uh, what factors affect a performance mm-hmm. so i went into uh, you know the scientific aspects of uh, performance okay. because my education background is of science correct so uh, then i started uh, doing research about this and uh, you know uh, that what happens mm-hmm. when a fl- player is at the top of uh, his or her career hmm. and what happens when uh, you know one day you are scoring a century and the other day you are getting out on duck or or the vice versa you you scoring three you know uh, zeros in a row and then suddenly you, you come out with a 100 super hmm. 100 so what what are the factors uh, about that Mm-hmm. so uh, i for this reason i did a professional course uh, which is based on the neuroscience basically it's a synchronization of your body and mind okay. because uh, most of the time what happens is uh, we, we have something in our mind but our body is not capable uh, to perform it that's what happened when uh, a player jeopardize his or her performance Okay. mentally he is up he is up there but you know physically the synchronization is not uh, there hmm. so that that happens so i took that, that professional course uh, which uh, gives you very much very much scientific tools and techniques to as to what happens when a brain gives a command hmm. and the body performs the action hmm. basically whatever you do hmm. actually as you mentioned earlier cricket is is a mind game ultimately yeah, yeah. you know when you when you go out to the elite level mm-hmm. cricket is basically 95% a mind game and oh. 5% physical oh. but this equation uh, you know uh, turns uh, around when you are playing in the nets mm-hmm. it's 90 it becomes 95% physical and 5% you know the subconscious part yeah. and that's how you should be performing in a game that you leave that uh, to your subconscious part that the skill you have acquired mm-hmm. and you let it execute on its own you know but what happens is generally a player plays fantastically in nets but they succumb to pressure when it comes to the real match scenario so what is happening they they are they are you know not using they are doing the reverse of it they are doing the reserve, reverse of it and when you are in in a match situation you let it let the performance happen mm. so it a phrase is being used that you know you have to get out of your own way but what happens is a player goes into overthinking mm. Mm. you know what, what is the selectors what will mm. select think oh i have played you know uh, one uh, one over koi run nahi aaya what what my run rate is mm-hmm. how will i score so lot of lot of uh, thing they goes in they goes into a conscious thinking pattern okay and conscious thinking pattern is very slow in is in compared to the subconscious pattern so uh, in fact john t rhodes uh, himself said that whatever he does in a practice uh, session he let his body do the work when he is in the match he doesn't think i mean you cannot think to uh, take a brilliant catch yeah. you know some of the catches are 
out of the mind i mean right, if right. you talk about consciously taking those catches yeah. you cannot take those catches right so right. there are some factors which can, can be addressed if you are aware of it if you are aware of how your body and mind uh, is synchronized hmm. so much of the factor is the self awareness of the player okay. basically okay because Interesting. to acquire a skill you do the physical work hmm. now the skill is been acquired and now you have to go inside the rope and you have to execute it mm-hmm. there's no coach there mm-hmm. there's no no one when you're batting there's no one when you're bowling you're on your own mm-hmm. so when the the execution part is there that is very much important mm-hmm. and that happens when you let your subconscious do the work generally generally players lack they they are not able to emulate what they are doing in nets into a match scenario okay so that is that is the major issue okay. and the very important factor is the self awareness of the player okay most of most of the time the players are uh, dependent on the coach okay. you know okay. to uh, get the guidance and when but in the match Mm. when they are on their own and they have to make crucial decisions mm. under pressure mm. they succumb to pressure and you know just they right. they are not able to right. but right. if they will be self aware mm. of the situation and mm. the process of it mm. because you know if you talk about uh, talk to any player mm. uh, as a matter of fact that you know what what is the most what do you think when you go out to bat he or she will say my only aim is to stay at the wicket okay but, but my question is the primary focus should be on the process of being in the moment and as a batsman when the bowler is releasing the ball you have to be present at that moment you can't be thinking about nahi mere ko 50 over tak khelna hai i mean you can't do that <laughs> so in that mix up they they don't uh, think about the task at hand they time travel basically so what Either what are they are in okay. or they are into past okay so, okay so what you are saying is ma'am to uh, you know take it one ball at a time yes i'm trying to say one ball at a time yeah. but more importantly focus on the task at hand at that moment okay okay irrespective whether you want to stay for 20 overs or whether you want to stay for 50 overs your funda or your your goal has to be that you watch the first ball play it to the merit and then you move on to the next ball yes definitely because as a batsman until unless the bowler uh, will not deliver the ball how can you predetermine right so you just have one you just have one mistake to do and you are out yeah. you know in a test match if i get out and yeah. i am the opener i have to still you know sit out for the whole day doing nothing but it is it is uh, you know it comes with practice it yeah. comes with some rituals that you follow yeah. so uh, i i put up a question here uh, vishal that okay. uh, we we say that It's a mind game. Cricket is a mind game. Okay. But my question is, when when a team goes out to play a match, mm-hmm. they they reach the venue, they do all the physical work mm-hmm. that they have to do. Mm-hmm. But what about mental aspect? What what they do about it? Right. They they don't go through any ritual in a team game. Mm-hmm. You know, individually in in individual uh, game, you can have your own rituals. Player might be having their own rituals. consciously or unconsciously but as a team as a unit what what exactly are you doing my mental makeup for the game correct correct, correct correct even even you know we have seen that you know before before the match happens the players actually they do their physical warm ups there is no mental warm up which is happening that is what i'm saying that is what i'm saying there's there just one uh, you know hurdle which happens where the captain or the coach you know comes together and they have a uh, they they share a talk and and that talk uh, 
doesn't matter for players <laughs> because they you know when they get inside they're into their own mind <laughs> they're into their own you know uh, surrounding they're yeah. into their own mind okay. either thinking of something which will be happening or either thinking of something which they have already done like if okay. they have you know uh, uh, lost a catch okay. if uh, if if they have dropped the catch okay. they might be thinking about that Right. or if i am a batsman i'll be thinking about i don't have to get out now that now that you have brought up this topic i have uh, two quick questions ma'am i'm super uh, enthu now and want to know a lot about this mental aspect how how this thing works uh, my first question is in the last three world cup that india has participated twice they have reached the finals 2017 2020 what what exactly went wrong both the times what according to you uh, you know is there a factor which is lacking in the indian side i think we have already discussed that vishal and it is quite visible that it, it's not a, a coincidence it, it is it isn't no it's not a failure of a team who has recently in the last world cup a team who has beaten australia dominated australia like anything i mean they're they're completely some other team they are not in indian team why what happened the skill level gone down no the training level gone down no the Got technical it. aspect technical aspect changed no so what is the difference hmm. what is the difference in australia playing all together a different uh, quality of cricket uh, in the finals and australia performing badly in the first encounter with india so there is a mindset there is a belief there is a as i told you in my first uh, when when i talked about the when we were against uh, we had to play against the defending champions our mindset our belief was not there yeah was no 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 they are the world champions so it's basically the why only it's happening in the finals yeah. why the body language suddenly changes in the finals yeah. what what is the reason it has to be up here up here okay nothing has to, i mean everything you can you know if you see a successful team yeah. everything can be duplicated Hmm. you can duplicate their uh, training pattern hmm. you, you can duplicate uh, their me- methodology yeah you can acquire skill that a particular player has you can do everything hmm. but how they are preparing mentally you cannot duplicate that okay very important so that was that was very much visible in the finals when india played australia okay, okay. you know was very much evident and even in 2017 world cup why we are crumbling under pressure because we are either in future or we are in past and we don't believe we don't have the belief in our skill set yes if if you you know ask a player to hit the shots he or she has then without pressure there's no problem but what happened when the wickets are getting down wickets are falling what happens to the middle and in so that is that is very much evident now mm-hmm. and someone asked me that uh, should should we should it be uh, okay now uh, to give the tag of chokers to the indian team so this is this is something Uh, clearly the psyche Playing of the player the at, the, at that moment either you have given up already hmm. the way a player walks into the hmm. uh, in the rope hmm. i i can tell you that will she be able to perform or not okay because i have i have studied the depth of what factors influence your physiology amazing 
your physiology is a very important factor oh. if if you are going inside with a dro- you know drooping shoulders yeah and the opposition and the oppo- opposition hmm. is able to make out hmm. that you are done okay. that's why they do- okay okay i think i i read this somewhere uh, you know post the world cup the t20 world cup in march which happened this year Ali- alisa heli i think she was she was quoted uh, she said that uh, you know the moment i received that direct ball from from dipti sharma uh, i knew that even she was uh, you know in equal pressure as much as i am and that yes. was the time that she realized that you know it's not just me alone in front of this 86000 crowd but the indian team there are so many players out there who are also in 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 the pressure so uh, let me not lose my control and that's what she did and the way she scored so th- so that's a psychological battle you know it's all psyche mm-hmm. at international level at, at elite level mm-hmm. players are uh, somewhat on the same level at the skill uh, you know when when you talk about the skill set correct not the skill set correct but on the given day hmm. who is more psychologically strong. fit correct. strong and able to maintain uh, uh, you know uh, a dominant uh, physiology hmm. will do will will do uh, you know will definitely take on the other uh, weak opponent and it can be sensed subconsciously as well many factors i mean there are many factors that i have because i have been researching uh, on this uh, matter for last 6 years hmm. so i am able to see hmm. acha ek aur cheez hoti hai that you know hmm. we call it superstition hmm. ki meko yahi jersey pehenni hai ya you know बैट से खेलना है या वट एवर बट दैट इज बट दैट इज नॉट सुपरस्टिशन दैट इज दैट इज अ टेक्निक कॉल्ड एंकरिंग दैट हैपन्स वेन यू वेन यू रिलेट समथिंग विद योर गुड परफॉर्मेंस दैट इज मेंटली गॉट लिंग यू नो सो दैट्स कॉल्ड एन एंकरिंग आई कैन एंकर इफ हैव टू Uh, make a person uh, believe that you know that isi baat se tera acha hoga i can anchor that and he will he or she will be confident enough ki nahi yahi hoga oh wow so there are there are lot of tech tools and techniques and the sports industry is evolving uh, so much i mean uh, with respect to the uh, the course that i am doing as a sports management uh, student i mean uh, the sport industry is it's it's a million billion dollar business and it's booming like anything right and with with the money comes great responsibility <laughs> and the and the athletes are evolving like anything i mean when 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 you talk about the olympic athletes and mm. their preparations mm. i mean they are totally into you know another level right right sure. that's the and, that's a and, different preparation level ma'am yes yes and that is that is something which is i would say it's basically the lack of awareness okay. that we have okay okay because uh, it's in in our country sports is still it's more of a physical activity mm-hmm. you know we consider ki sports as a physical activity mm. but at any level you go mm. you do you can definitely train yourself to go up to that level and perform at will yeah yeah not ki agar mere bat pe ball aayi middle mein to aaj mera acha din hai so what what about the so many hours that you have put in in the practice mm-hmm. where, where that practice has gone right 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 now now that we yeah. know what the problem is ma'am now that you have stressed a lot on you know what exactly happened and that we actually succumb to the pressure we could not actually you know play mind games at the 2017 and 2020 games what according to you is the solution i think uh, uh, there, there is a there is a research uh, that has been done in 2008 uh, uh, in the you know for the athletes that have won most medals 
so the factor which came first was not the talent of that athlete that was the self awareness part okay how self aware the player is mm. is to how he or she can manage mm. with within uh, the environment that is there around them and how they can come up with the best of their ability mm. so there are basically there are some tools techniques mm. like you mm. you make some pre game rituals you okay. make some post game rituals uh-huh. you you uh, as i uh, mentioned anchoring is one tool which is very very effective mm-hmm. so there are lot many uh, researches have been done and lot many factors have been uh, described as to how you can uh, psych up yourself okay. how you can improve your psyche uh-huh. and how you control the situation which in which you have to make the decision making basically okay. Interesting. So there are certain uh, tools and techniques, uh, like I told you about anchoring. There are lot many uh, tools and techniques uh-huh. that we, uh, you know, uh, work with athletes uh, and train them to be self-aware. Because when they are going to perform, they will be dependent on themselves. Okay, amazing. They have to be self-sufficient. Yeah. great great so if if everything goes well now with the covid situation uh, the way it is uh, you know probably in next 6 to 8 months we'll see a world cup uh, a 50 over world cup happening in new zealand uh, and again you know you know all all eyes would be on the indian side because there's mithali and chulan ma'am also making a comeback in the indian side after a long uh, my question to you is ma'am uh, tell me more about about your sculpting mentors tell me more about this initiative uh, what exactly led to the formation of this what are the services currently it is offering and who can actually enroll for this particular course is that that is there in the sculpting mentor right so we shall sculpting mentors as, as the name suggests uh, we we took a lot of time to uh, come up to uh, this uh, you know particular name so uh, a sculptor who is working on a you know on a raw rock, rock which has no value which has nothing in it but a sculptor sculpt it and makes a beautiful statue out of it or something very priceless correct so that, that's that's what sculpting mentors are and the vision is basically to carve the human mind mm-hmm. and tap the optimum latent potential mm-hmm. which an individual is having but they are ha- don't having this clue that they have this if i can do something you can also do that particular thing mm-hmm. if you use modeling modeling mm-hmm. means what i do what i what are my rituals mm-hmm. how do i uh, process the information if you will be able to do that modeling you will be also can do what i am doing is it more like uh, uncovering the hidden talents yes it's basically carving your mind to make you aware of your hidden talents lovely so oh. that that is our tagline is the carve carvers of human mind so that's why sculpting mentors because we are mentoring people uh-huh. and we are we are trying to create something beautiful out of out of what they think that they don't have amazing amazing so that is the vision of the company and okay. the mission is to make uh, athletes self sufficient mm-hmm. make them self aware mm-hmm. and so that they can uh, they can tap the uh, you know uh, the term we use the zone mm-hmm. the zone you know it's, it's very much related to Uh, Sachin Tendulkar, you know, we, when we talk about him, uh, the term comes up very often. Mm-hmm. Is the zone? Mm-hmm. So the zone can happen at will as well. It's not that today I have middled the ball, so I will score today. No, mm-hmm. without middling the ball, you should 
be able to know that you, yes you have the capability and yes you have done the right things to score today mm-hmm. so okay. it's basically to give them the confidence that they have everything within themselves mm-hmm. and then they can per- perform and get into that zone mm-hmm. at will so that's the mission of the company basically okay, okay. how do you all do this how do you all uncover the the hidden talents is it any is there any workshop which is conducted uh, is there live one on one conversation which happens do you also give them some activities what exactly is the uh, the process about yeah the process is basically um, uh, we conduct workshops we conduct workshops and uh, in workshop we uh, not we don't allow more than 20 people because it has to be interactive and we have to be focusing on each individual because each individual is different and they have different uh, capacities and they have different uh, capabilities so with with the certain techniques we get to know and we uh, what we do is we uh, tap some parameters we give this some parameters according to the athlete himself or herself and we ask the athlete to rate himself one uh, you know out of 10 where if if i talk about confidence let's say so where that athlete is standing in terms of the confidence level from Got 1 it. to 10 scale Got it. then we we will have the whole uh, parameters and we have the scale uh, with us with us at where that uh, person is standing then we start educating them we start using techniques we give them some drills to do we uh, use some breath work basically okay you know a certain type of ratio of inhale then hold and then exhale okay. and we use different uh, interventions of uh, different branches of science to uh, customize a plan for a particular athlete interesting and then and then we ask after few sessions then again we ask the athlete to map themselves mm-hmm. and give the rating out of 1 to 10 okay and see the difference for themselves amazing so if i say i was at 5 and now i have done something which i have uh, you know so either i will be declining or i'll be uh, remaining remaining on the same platform or i'll be increasing so more i mean till now no one has gone down wow they have they have improved in one or two or three sessions at, at you know even in just three sessions they have improved up to three to four points lovely basically our aim with sculpting mentors mm-hmm. is uh, as i told you when i started on was conversing with you mm-hmm. you asked about my first outing for the indian team Yeah. So I told you that you know there was there there is something which I relate in my talk later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is something which is the I feel there is a vacuum between the domestic and the international level. Okay. When a athlete broke into the scene of uh, international level, mm-hmm. that va- vacuum is is that that has been created. the athlete takes lot of time to adjust and acclimatize to the international level mm-hmm. basically in terms of the mental aspect okay okay you know so the athlete is not experienced he or she is you know lacking that confidence to go out and perform like tk right. another game for me no it does not happen so what happens the athlete basically takes time uh, it depends on the, upon the athlete one year two year to get acclimatized and then get into the groove and start scoring yeah. which happened with me as well uh, you know okay 2002 i made my deb- debut yeah and uh, to, uh, to 2003 that it took me time hmm. so our aim hmm. is to compress that time okay. give those tactics give those techniques give give those rituals mm-hmm. to the player at a grassroots mm-hmm. or even the player if she he or she is playing at the state level mm-hmm. 
give them those techniques make them acclimatize to the elite level so that they don't lose those years oh wow amazing those prime years Got in it. between and they are ready to go and perform at the elite level how they are doing it in the domestic level amazing so i i think i have i've lost so much time in between and many athletes does that for sure our aim is to you know compress that time hmm. agar ek athlete ne 5 saal liye hain so we we would like to compress it to hmm. let's say 2 years hmm. and that is very much possible right 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 so this course of yours ma'am uh, at sculpt mentor all things that you offer currently is it only meant for cricketers uh, or is it primarily meant for cricketers no. or it, or it, is it open to all basically sculpting mentors is a uh, training company basically uh, the director founder she is a trainer uh, miss shalini which uh, she is a trainer she has an uh, experience of over 25 years wow. uh, in training and ad- ad- administration so uh, she works basically on skill enhancement uh, workshops that uh, and she she does it for the corporates for institutions for colleges for students and i am attached with it as a brand ambassador for sports vertical Got so it. my intention to uh, associate with this company is to uh, grow the sports uh, you Got know it. education field this okay. vertical Okay. and to start uh, training the athletes in this part and also there's there's a, you know solid need uh, of of this particular course this particular workshop especially for the female cricketers because like you rightly said they lose out on uh, a lot of their prime years you know in sort of getting acclimatized to to the situations i think uh, i will give you an example of uh, a player i worked with Uh, she's from Rajasthan. I uh, in the later uh, part of my career, I played professionally for Rajasthan and mentored the team there. So uh, th- th- there was a girl of 12 uh, years uh, of age. I spotted her in uh, uh, 2014-15, and uh, then she started. Uh, other uh, before that, she wasn't uh, playing for Rajasthan at all. I mean, she used to come and go for the trials. Okay. In 2014-15, I uh, picked her up because I was the mentor, mm. and she I uh, saw the talent in uh, her. Mm. Ultimately, I worked her with her on mm. technique mm-hmm. on this mental aspect for in two years, uh, for five months. I mean, within the span of two years, just five months I've spent with her, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, last last to last year. She played the Challengers Trophy in under oh. uh, in the under twenty three format. Amazing. She, she scored one twenty eight. Wow. She scored seventy two. She scored a nineties. In just and she came to me just for uh, five months. Oh, lovely. And she she has been uh, she has been a part of their team under nineteen under twenty three uh, and senior team and. she she is the one most of the time she she is the performing uh, person who uh, the performing player mm-hmm. from rajasthan so she she is a, a prime uh, you know you can say a, a prime player for them amazing so I, my uh, to quote her name is to just tell, tell the you know the listeners the people that it is it is very much possible and it is very much po- possible in a shorter duration of time because it's all scientific based okay. it has a logic behind mm-hmm. and if we work with logic a mm-hmm. lot of things can be done on a with a shorter duration of time what what you have achieved so far ma'am with with the course and with the workshop that you have done i think it has given massive results ayushi is is one prime example that we have in front of us today uh and i would urge you know especially the female cricketers listening the podcast and watching the video today to to sort of enroll for such course uh, wherever possible uh, at sculpting mentors you also get you know access to a cricketer like jaya sharma who has been there done that uh, proven at at different verticals uh, so whoever wants to let's say if, if a girl watching today 
uh, wants to you know get associated and wants to get enroll for this particular course what is the steps or how can she do that so uh, we have a website and uh, soon we'll be linking it with the registration form uh-huh. uh so uh, the person can uh, visit the website which is uh, www.sculptingmentors.com uh and uh, they can visit the website and they will get to know what is the process that we use what are okay. the technique that we use how we work uh-huh. and uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know i i am available uh, through uh, i mean i think female cricket is doing fantastic job of uh, you know uh, bridging the gap between uh, players and facilitators like different coaches and different players uh, different ex players so i think uh, they they can approach you as well and uh, you know probably you can uh, make them understand and how to go about things people like you can facilitate these things that you know uh, if a person wants to have some some kind of a you know a, te- a training or uh, some me- method so uh, they can come up to visit uh, the website and then can enroll there and uh, through you as well uh, i mean uh, wherever it's possible i mean i'm i'm ready because uh, vishal you rightly mentioned that i would say my usp with sculpting mentors and this project is that i have lived through those moments right right so i can relate to a player in a much better sense Correct. than any XYZ person for sure for sure any day man and that is something i i feel that is uh, the usp of my association right. with this topic i cannot stress enough uh, you know about this particular course because you know just just by talking to jam mm i have learned a lot of things uh and how you can elevate your performances just by taking care after the mental aspect uh i will also link down the website i will link down the the facebook page instagram on all the social handles uh down this particular video uh quickly to wrap things up ma'am uh i would want you to talk about the the seminar the webinar that you did for the indian coaches uh where even the rahul dravid sir had, had participated so yes we we were fortunate very fortunate enough to uh, you know uh, been asked uh, invited for a seminar to uh, give a preview give a, a sort of you know insight uh, okay. about what we are uh, intend to do so okay. we we gave them a presentation i mean uh, the indian uh, men support staff i mean all the Uh, coaches were there. I mean, right from uh, Sanjay Bangar to uh, R. Shridhar to Bharat Arun to uh, Mr. Nanavati, uh, Abhay Sharma, and uh, Mr. Rahul Dravid because he was taking a under-19 camp there. Mm-hmm. So he he was you know going and coming back. So he was also attending the session, and uh, we we have the testimonials uh, uh, and the feedback from them on our website. Okay. so i we we got very uh, good uh, you know in a feedback uh, feedback in terms of they say that we also touch upon these subjects with the word players but uh, not in this this much depth wow so he, mr shri he said that i would like to explore it more and use it with my players okay. with the indian team Impressive. and uh, let me tell you that uh, most of the players yeah. in if, if i have to talk about uh, recently uh, you know last uh, ipl uh, only or uh, uh, previous ipl uh, uh, mahendra singh dhoni himself he has hired a trainer uh, the course which i have done uh, uh, based on neuroscience that is neuro linguistic programming mm-hmm. he hired a trainer prior to the ipl season Oh wow. Wow. This is the awareness is coming but it's mm-hmm. on on you know a uh, elite level. Correct. 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 So they have they have the um, they have the resources. True. They have the people 
so, to use those uh, things yeah. but yes uh, my my intention with this is to uh, yeah. take it down to the grassroots so, take so, it down so. to the much lower um, you know state at the state level yeah. so that when uh, the player uh, becomes tough the player becomes perfect and go and play for india so he or she will be confident enough yeah. and believes that that he is she is or yeah. he is yeah. at par with any of the foreign teams correct. which are there correct correct so, i'm glad you did that ma'am and uh, you know such such facilities such courses are only available to the elite clickers but thanks to you thanks, thanks to sculpting mentors that now it is also accessible to you know any and every you know boy girl whoever wants to elevate their performance by right. actually working on their mind yes of course and and uh, in the end i would say that uh, uh, the journey for me uh, with the with the cricketing you know the playing journey has been ended though Yeah. But a new journey has started, and it's my life purpose to equip the players, you know, to achieve much more what they think they can. Wow! And and, and that is that is something which that's why I've uh, I'm doing I'm about to finish my sports management from I am Rohit, and it has given me uh, you know a better view overall view a bird view of, uh, of you know the. uh sports industry and the business side of sports mm-hmm. the all all the roi factors and you know how to generate revenue yeah. and how to take care of elite players and managing them oh. you know to give best to give the best to them yeah. uh being in that environment and in that environment that elite player has to just think how to perform well and everything else will be taken care of I'm. I'm sure, ma'am. Uh, what you have achieved so far is, is incredible. Uh, you know, before cricket, before playing, uh, before resigning from cricket, you were actually doing wonders for the Indian side. And now, after retiring, also you have, you know, still not given up that vision. You are still working hard. You are still making sure that, uh, you know, whatever and wherever the opportunity comes, I have to, you know, be be my best. Uh, thank you for this wonderful session. i feel is just about the awareness vishal which uh, i think uh, connecting with you i think uh, that problem uh, must be solved because uh, you are one platform which is doing so much for women's cricket and uh, i really salute you that <laughs> you have up, you have taken up a game uh, and giving it exposure that women cricket today the you know the names of uh, star players they have become a household name now yeah so it's it's great uh, and i congratulate you on your journey Thank and you. uh, i hope that a uh, lot more people will get attached with you and listen to you and know about the stars the players who are equally de- determined and e- equally dedicated as the main counterparts thank thanks to you ma'am uh, you know th- everything is possible because of people like you uh, because of you know, the stalwarts like you rightly mentioned people who actually led the foundation of women's cricket early in 70s and 80s because yes. game is is, is very old uh, we have just come in, in the picture and we have just started with doing our bit uh, but there there's more to the story and uh, you you all are the real heroes so thank, thank you, you. <laughs> thank Pleasure. you for for all the contribution that you have done so far thank you for the vision that you have towards women's cricket uh, i i dearly look up to you for all the work that you have been doing uh, you're also currently you studying so you know you're always uh, up for that knowledge for that extra knowledge which is a beautiful trait to have that you never stop learning and these are these are traits that i pick up from you from your personality it was it was great chatting with you ma'am and learning about you know the psyche the the, the thoughts that goes behind in making a, a professional player um, amazing chat and uh, i hope you enjoyed the conversation too yes of course i mean in any time uh, it's it's my pleasure to you know uh, connect with you and female cricket 
and uh, i hope lot many people uh, you know women cricketers and lot many other people get to know about female cricket and uh, as you are you know getting to the nooks and corner of india and yeah. getting those uh, players uh, you know like yeah. meghna yeah. so and and the people are getting on that platform and are keen to help those players that's a great initiative lovely that's a that's a beautiful compliment ma'am thank you thank you so much for taking out time for this conversation thank you thank you it's all my pleasure